Welcome classic rock fans to a short video on the loudest bands in history. This is a much requested video so I thought I'd dust off some of those old stories of sheer volume and power. Now if you're anything like me we've been to, uh, we've all been to a few ear benders. So I thought I'd intersperse with these stories my own personal experiences with loud gigs. And do stick around to the end and I'll reveal to you the loudest gig I ever attended. My own research in this matter in terms of the volume that bands play at often exceeds sheer or purely decibel level but often other factors like the type of music played and more importantly the venue in which this music is performed. Number 10 is The Prodigy. Now this band used to play at offensive volume levels especially uh, coattailing on the success of Fat of the Land. Now sound engineer John Burton claimed that their set was so loud that it was uh, sufficient enough to down aircraft nothing like a bit of well-placed hyperbole i think but he did say i'm actually quoting this is the loudest thing in the world one thing for sure is that pulsating throb of fire starter and that pounding bass was loud enough to rattle a few skeletons i think number nine is acdc from 2015. now these guys can be noisy buggers there's no doubt about that often hailed as one of the loudest rock and roll bands in history but it was their recent gig at an Auckland venue in 2015 that uh, ignited a right old ding-dong local residents who felt rock and roll was indeed noise pollution. Apparently this gig could be heard miles and miles away and it apparently even set off car alarms of those parked nearby. Now my experience with ACDC, I saw them on the Rock or Bus tour. This was with uh, Brian Johnson, by the way. And I thought, well, this is a big outdoor gig. I mean, how loud can it be, really? All that sound is lost. But uh, I spent a large part of that concert feeling like somebody was drilling screwdrivers into my ears. In fact, my tinnitus was so loud, my wife complained that it was even waking her up. Number eight is the Foo Fighters from 2011. Uh, interestingly, at the same venue that ACDC caused a bit of a ruckus as well, Auckland, New Zealand, I believe. Apparently the effects of the bass frequencies along with the fans jumping up and down caused um, the actual earth to shudder at three times per second in rhythmic motion, similar to a volcanic terror registered at three hertz on the seismic meters apparently. Now the wonderful Douglas Adams in his book The Restaurant at the End of the Universe wrote about a plutonium rock band called Disaster Area who were the loudest band in the galaxy and was so loud in fact they could destroy whole planets. Maybe that's what the Foo Fighters are aiming for. Number seven is Kiss from 2009 at a gig. I think they played in Ottawa, uh, which was so loud. I think it reached 136 decibels that the National Capital Commission was so concerned by potential noise levels at the Blues Fest gig that they had investigators in place to try and get the sound engineer to turn down the volume. Now, Kiss had a, a, a reputation of being a, a loud band. In fact, uh, I think possibly the loudest gig I ever uh, attended was uh, KISS Crazy Nights tour. Um, I had serious hearing problems for two or three days afterwards. Interesting when I saw KISS on the Farewell tour recently at the O2, it didn't seem that loud. Maybe they just figured there were so many old fogies there that they had to keep it, keep it down a bit. If it's too loud, you're too old. Number six is Left Field from 1996. Leftfield, of course, are a British electronic music group formed in 1989 by Neil Barnes and Paul Daly. This band were, I think, rose to popularity along with artists like the Chemical Brothers and Fatboy Slim. Now, the infamous gig that I'm referring to took place in 1996 at London's Brixton Academy, where the band played so loud that they started to bring the ceiling down in bits of plaster. Apparently, they were invited back on, uh, th I think, on the condition that they turned it down a little bit uh, the band said uh, were apparently quite apologetic so they were happy to the last thing they'd want to do is destroy such a wonderful and iconic building this concert uh, the as i said at the aforementioned brixton academy reached 137 decibels which is uh, some serious uh, serious stuff number five is man of war from 1984 i think this band were on a quest to be the loudest band ever bit spinal tap make sure the amplifiers are calibrated to go up to 11. if i may quote from an article the band had a technical contract rider that specified a minimum sound pressure level of 126 decibels for their sound systems but apparently the offending gig was in hanover in germany where they actually overtook the who's record 
by playing at 129.5 decibels using 10 tons of amplifiers. These amplifiers were about 40 feet in length and 21 feet high. Apparently at a sound check in 2008, they reportedly reached 139 decibels. Um, the band regularly boasts of ear-splitting power. Number four is Motet from 1986 when they played the Variety Theatre in Cleveland. They played at a whopping 130 decibels and apparently was uh, doing so much damage to the structural integrity of the building that the band had to be stopped. Now, obviously, Motorhead have got a reputation for playing at an absolutely punishing level. There's no doubt about that. Let's make sure everything is louder than everything else. Of course, on the Bomber Tour in 1979, they played at, uh, I think, a whopping 130 decibels as well. Uh, and also, the, they did, there was a famous gig at the Newcastle City Hall where they either started to bring down the plaster. My experiences have seen Motorhead on the 10th anniversary tour, which was 1985, supported by Wendy O. Williams of the Plasmatics. And uh, a year later on the Orgasmatron tour. Now the Orgasmatron album is a fabulous album that's in desperate need of a remix, if you ask me. But that's neither here nor there. But we were on both occasions we were sat right up in, in the balcony. So I think we were cushioned from the, the, the sheer power of the, of the volume, really. So I can't say I experienced Motorhead uh, that intensely. Nevertheless, I remember my denim jacket with the, the shoulders being white, with the plaster and dust that was coming down from the... Uh, the, the sheer power of it all. Number three is Led Zeppelin from 1969 when the band taught Canada. Apparently the American Speech Language Hearing Association recorded um, a level of 130 decibels when they started the song Heartbreaker. So there's certainly no doubt that uh, Led Zeppelin were a loud band with their own brand of bludgeoning blues. And there was a, a spirit of one-upmanship, I think, at this time. All these bands trying to outdo each other. Everything was getting louder as well. I mean, in, in the States, you had um, bands like Grand Funk and Blue Cheer. who would play at punishing volumes as well. But Led Zeppelin certainly deserve a place on this list. Number two is Deep Purple from 1972, when they played the Rainbow Theatre in London. They apparently brought a 10,000-watt Marshall PA system. And the story goes that one show uh, was so loud, in fact, that some of the audience members actually passed out. I don't know if that's true or not, but nevertheless, it sounds that they certainly used to play at, uh, at what can only be described as a horrendous volume. In fact, in 1972, the Guinness Book of Records crowned Deep Purple uh, the loudest band after 117 decibels was registered at the aforementioned London's Rainbow Theatre. 117 decibels perhaps doesn't seem as loud as bands playing at 136 decibels. But as I said, I think sometimes the the area or the venue in which these um, uh, bands play often affects the perception of, of volume as well. But there's no doubt that Deep Purple um, had a reputation for being uh, a bit noisy. And number one is, uh, and you can pretty much guess what it's going to be, it's The Who from 1976 when they played Charlton Athletic Football Ground to a crowd of like 75,000 people. The volume was supposed to reach 126 decibels and this is measured 100 feet away from the speakers. Both Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey have uh, complained of se uh, severe hearing loss in later life, as did John Entwistle, of course. Roger Daltrey, I think, said in his biography, if they'd known that when they were younger, no, I don't think they would have kept the volume down. In fact, Roger Daltrey would often complain that they were too loud and it made it very difficult to sing as he just could not hear himself properly. In fact, he went on to say that uh, the Live at Leeds album is not his favourite because his voice was too strained and trying to keep up with the sheer volume of the band. And he argues that the Live at Hull gig is much, much better. Interestingly, Townsend went on to establish uh, the charity here, Hearing Education and Awareness for Rockers, which does feel a bit like bolting the stable door a little bit too late. So if we think about volume and bands, um, there was a band called Sleazy Joe in 2008 in Sweden, reached uh, apparently 143.2 decibels. And the British punk band Gallows reached, I think, 132 decibels. But these guys were actually recording in the studio at the time. Uh, so it doesn't really count as a live gig. Blue Cheer, uh, I think when they were recording their album, uh, there were lots of complaints about the noise coming from that that could be heard from miles away. Now, as promised at the beginning of this video, a few tales from my, my own gig experiences. 
I saw Motorhead a couple of times, as I've said, they were seriously loud. Kiss on the Crazy Nights tour left me with some serious hearing issues for a few days. But more recently, I went to see Public Image Limited, and uh, it was a gig that was uncomfortable, shall we say, with the sheer volume that they were playing at. But one of the loudest gigs I've been to, and this may surprise you, as I went to see Skunk and Nancy um, at the Cambridge Corn Exchange, who were playing at such a punishing volume that uh, lots of grown men around me were shoving their fingers in their ears as it was getting so uncomfortable. So there you are, that's my experiences of loud gigs. I'd love to hear what yours are. Please do share in the comments below. And do take time to click like, subscribe, and check that notification bell as it all helps the algorithm. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching this enjoyable little excursion. Bit of a dalliance, I think. And hope you are well, staying safe, but more importantly, that you keep listening.